Are you familiar? And I've been meaning to talk to you about this guy. Are you familiar with Charleston White? Can't say I am. What you okay. Uh, he's just a, he's, he's a big YouTuber um, now, and he's catching a lot of slack for things he's saying about DMX and Bloods and Crips and stuff. What uh, I'll do is before. Okay. I've, heard about, I've heard about some his stories. Got the yeah. eye. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah. definitely, um, he says some things that, you know, you could agree with, but he puts a twist on it to where, you know, you're just like, damn, dog, you went a little too far. Um, but he made this comment and it got him some slack. He said, and I quote, you bust your shots for your hood, your homie and your set, but you're not busting a shot for the black woman kidnapped, raped, choked, or murdered. Sit your train monkey ass down somewhere, end quote. What do you think about that quote? I presume he's a white guy. He's a black dude. He's a black dude. Yeah, yeah, about as black as it gets from Texas, former, former crip from what I understand. And that, that's, his, uh, that's his, uh, his, his point of view on that. Well, you know what, Doc? I had this conversation not long ago. Recently, like it was last week, over the weekend. Same thing. Uh, a lot of stuff happens in our community, in the streets, nationally, or whatever the case may be. And there's never a reaction that would make anybody think twice about doing it again. I'm going to put it like that. Okay. Okay. When, but when you do something in the hood, the most the slightest level, the slightest imperfection of respect will get you shot, beat up, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But things can happen on a bigger, bigger, bigger level, and it's kind of well, you know what, man? You know he wasn't he wasn't one of us, and you know he or whatever whatever excuse it is taken not to make the presence felt um, is 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 if they find a way to. Ignore it. He has a point. He, he has a point. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, some some things. If there's no reaction, if uh, the only way you stop a bully is to fight a bully. Of course. Okay. You you cannot reason with a bully. You can't uh, you can't negotiate with a bully. Bully understand bully at bullyism. Okay. If you bring mm -hmm. it to a bully, if you bring it to the bully, bully gonna stop messing with you. Ask me how I know. I was I was a kid, bullied all my life, man. All my uh, all my young life, I was bullied. High Catholic school, beating my ass. Okay, and at one point in time, my old man told me, "Dude, you come home, ass. I'm gonna take you in the back. I'm gonna show you how to fight. You get another ass open. You might beat you up again. Okay, uh, me and you gonna fight. All right. And I didn't want that fight. And next time somebody picked on me, I tore him to the ass, man. And guess what? Between not being bullied no more, I also became the king of the school. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Now, to be the king of the school from my position was almost uh, a position, I did, a job I didn't want. Mm -hmm. But it got me kicked out of school, too, because I had so many fights because nobody could believe that somebody who'd been getting bullied all this time could fight and win. Mm -hmm. Okay? So after I win, I get kicked out of school. And by, by that time, I was I was about 12, 13 years old. I ended up going to Vanguard. And when I got to Vanguard, I had, I had one fight the whole time. It's kind of like your reputation precedes you. Mm -hmm. And even though I got Centennial, I, I only had maybe one or two fights, the situation with the gangsters, and one other little situation. But other than that, um, but because you know people are here fights. Because at, at, at Vanguard, <laughs> ninth yeah. grade. Ninth grade ditch day. Ninth grade ditch day. We all went out to play at Del Rey. Okay. I'm 14 years old. This is why I didn't, this is why I didn't have no problems at Centennial. This dude from my neighborhood, he always picked on us, picked on us, picked on us. This dude, we were playing football in the street. And you know, sometimes you get to block it too hard. Mm -hmm. He he blocked and he stopped me. And my scary ass, I took off running. He followed me home to my steps. He followed me home to my steps. My, my daddy was, I said, daddy, open the door. He opened the door, what's going on? And homeboy walked up on the steps with me. Come on, he, ch he chased me home. My old man closed the door. You got to handle that, son. <laughs> I can't come in the house. Nope, can't come in the house. Okay? Mm -hmm. I can't, and, and me and homeboy got into it, and 
I didn't beat him up, but I took mm-hmm. his punches, and that was he wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. Okay, he wasn't expecting that. I, I got a couple of good shots in, but I got my ass whooped. Okay, but that summer, be the next the school year, he stopped. He stopped picking on me that from that point on. Okay, but we went to summertime for um, Senior Ditch Day Vanguard. I'm at Playa Del Rey. I got a young lady. She liked me. She got me. I'm laying my head in her lap. I, I got some cheap ass wines from that Boone Farm. I got a headache. I, the sun beaming on, ain't no sun, ain't no shade at the beach. And a homeboy walked over to me, just like they do in the, them, them uh, uh, Elvis Presley's movies, and yeah. kicked sand in my face, man. Aw, oh, hell no. Nah. I jumped up and I started kicking his ass, okay? Nice. And nobody expected that, okay? I got to kick it. He was a gangster. Mm-hmm. He was a gangster, okay? And he got his ass beat by a square. And he wasn't one of them cats that was so respected, they was going to jump me. Because we were from mm-hmm. the same neighborhood. Everybody know that. Everybody know we had problems already. Don't jump in. Don't jump in. Don't jump in. And we, we got it on, and I tore his ass up. When I got to Centennial, I didn't have no more problems. Till I got to, to, uh, to the 11th grade, when I got into it with uh, putting him. But he mm-hmm. was one, he was called himself, he wasn't a Pyro, he was a Jarvis Street, which is, he eventually joined Pyro. But okay. he was he was one of the main he got kid, he was one of the main players on my neighborhood that was supposed to be a gangster. Nobody everybody knew he couldn't fight, but he was a big bully. And I tore his ass up. He stopped picking on me. Okay. So like I said, I'm using that example as life itself. When you, if you got a bully, bully don't understand nothing but ass Oh, well, these are good yeah. fights. If you won't, if if you don't win the fight, the bully at least got to qualify for handicap parking. <laughs> if you don't win the fight, at least he got to know he was in a fight. Every time he take a step, he know, oh shit, that's right. I shouldn't mess with that son of a bitch right there. Win or lose, okay? And they respect that. They respect that. Will he, will he respect what he giving out, okay? So as long as you're trying to march and understand that and, and, and negotiate, and they don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And you know, you all just, the, go ahead. Go, no, you go ahead. No, I'm saying all the um, the gangsters we got in the community, we don't control nothing as gangsters. All the gangsters we have in our community don't control nothing. But the streets, mm-hmm. you don't control awesome, your man. money. You don't control your money. You don't control your, your property. You don't control the economics of the community. You control each other. Keep each other in fear. You ain't, you ain't gonna step out your line. Uh, too many. You ain't gonna step out of line. Too much more. But when they stepped on it, when I tell you what, when they started messing with the Mexican vendors and uh who was selling them uh tacos, whatever. Yeah, and corn the, and all yeah. Corn and all that, the the the, the message, hey, hey, no, 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 no. It's gonna it's, it's gonna go down, okay? Yeah. So they, these guys are harmless. They try to get a few dollars. You can't rob them. The mm-hmm. the, 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 the the guys who don't sell corn. Who said other stuff was going to back them up because that, that, that's their people. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing here. Okay. Yeah. They stopped doing them. They stopped, they left them corn sellers, the taco sellers, the fruit sellers. They left them alone because they know damn well if you mess with them, you got to mess with them too. And we don't have that. Mm. Man. Yeah. Okay. If we, yeah. somebody mess with us, we on our own. We might do some marching, do some posting on Facebook, or maybe a YouTube video. But you know, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. That's it, a lesson to be learned. No, it ain't gonna happen. What up, yeah. unknown Raider guy? Yeah, let me uh let's see. Do we have anything in Oh man, DJ Wick said that Strawberry Hill made your nuts drop. I remember that Strawberry Hill, the peach navel, the fuzzy navel Come or whatever. Oh man. Woo, I can taste it now. It ain't a good taste in my mouth. I just yeah. <laughs> Man, that uh, um, what's that shit? MD twenty twenty. That oh, shit was like Ooh. that or shit was like that shit was like drinking flavored battery acid. Okay, Ooh. you might as well go to your nearest car battery, pour the acid in the cup, put a little Kool Aid in there, and shake it up, because you gonna get the same result. That shit was horrible. That's all we could afford though. And yeah. you know, in the Thunderbird. Okay. Yeah. 
You know, so Cisco. It, Cisco was around my my time. I remember everybody was drinking that nasty Cisco. That tastes like medicine. Man, it did. I don't. You know. It, but but to tell you something though, Cisco, Saint Ives, a ball. They knew they knew how to market that stuff to the black community. Talk about it, Lonzo. They, they had a homeboy doing the commercials, the malt, uh, who, uh, Smokey Robinson, whoever did the, the, the malt, the malt commercials were the beer and. Uh, oh, uh, they, uh, they had Billy, Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. There doing you go. Code 45. Okay. Code 45. They had, they had, they had you thinking that you drink Code 45, you're going to get yeah. laid. <laughs> you might get laid, but you might get the case afterwards. You're going to be knocked out. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, they had for a while. St. Ives had every brother with lips doing St. Ives commercials. Eight, yeah. uh, Snoop eight Dog, Q, Biggie. Snoop Dog, Big, everybody just St. Ives. Those commercials were okay. dope, too, I remember. They were dope as hell. They were in many songs, and yes. they were dope. Yeah, they was. I think the budget was 25 per song, okay? Damn. Yep. Uh, yeah, any, anybody for uh, any of my hip-hop nerds who like facts out there, uh, the Biggie commercial, if you check that Biggie commercial out, it's actually the beat for New York, New York, which became a popular hit later on by Dog Pound. So just a little mm. something out there. He busted okay. over that track. But yeah, yeah, they marketed that to us really well. But I tell you what, you couldn't find that shit nowhere in the hood, nowhere in Torrance. Right. You couldn't find it nowhere, nowhere yeah. in the white community. You barely find yeah. it in the Gardena. Mm -hmm. Okay, it did not. It, it was it, it was limited distribution, and um, what made it so potent is that the the uh, the uh, the stuff it was made from was from the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. The malt, used, yeah. The malt, they, used, they used to throw it away. Okay, they used to throw it away, and they found a way to um, filter it. And kill some of the taste because I think it was what, what was it cold filtered or something like that? It was some kind of filter they had on there? Charcoal filtered. Oh, charcoal. Uh, okay. It was I think it was charcoal filtered. Mm -hmm. They found a way to filter it enough to uh, kill some of the bad taste and add some other stuff to it. But that was it was so concentrated. Okay, it was so concentrated mm -hmm. that it, it it made it was it was it's like it was like I like crack. Okay. Mm -hmm. They did a yeah. survey. I did a, I, I read, it was a guy called Coach Powell. Coach Powell did a, wrote a book called Message in the Bottom. He interviewed 100 people in jail. Uh, out of the 100 people in jail, I think like 87 of them was, was high on eight ball when they uh, committed their crimes. Damn. Okay. That was the number one, number one river to jail, eight ball and the gun. Okay. Because you're probably going to go to jail. Damn. But it was 87 cats. He said out of 100 people, 87 guys uh, was high on eight ball when they committed their crimes. 